Horse Racing's Triple Crown, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. The first of the Triple Crown races to be created, and the last to be run in the series each year, comes from the same state where horse racing was introduced in America in 1665. They're off in the Belmont Stakes, four three-year-olds in the Mile and a Half Classic. The Belmont Stakes, also known as the Test of the Champion, produces horse racing's Where Were You When moments. Held over a grueling mile and a half at Belmont Park in New York, it's the oldest of the Triple Crown races dating back to 1867. The Belmont Stakes was New York before the Statue of Liberty, or Times Square, or the Yankees. The race is named for August Belmont, a financier born in Germany who came to the United States in 1837 to work for the famous Rothschild banking firm during a turbulent economic time for America after the Great Depression. Belmont was the head of the Democratic National Committee in the 1850s during a turbulent political time for America right before the Civil War. The name Belmont lives on two centuries later in horse racing. Although that wasn't the original name, August was born Aaron in 1813. The original German family name of Schoenberg was changed to the French Belmont, both meeting Beautiful Mountain, in order to avoid anti-Semitism. Belmont built Jerome Park in 1866, and the Belmont Stakes was held there until 1889. Then the race moved to Morris Park until that track closed in 1904. Then to the newly created Belmont Park in 1905, which has since been a stage for historic performances in much the same way that Broadway and Yankee Stadium also are in New York. More than just historic performances, sports yearns for legends like Babe Ruth. Hello, honey. How'd you like that one? Everybody's in line and they're off. Secretariat achieved legend status with a 31 length Belmont Stakes domination in world record time to sweep the Triple Crown in 1973. There's still a magnetism to the race and horse racing fans still watch with wide eyed wonder. Most people can quote that to me, quote that call. He's moving now like a tremendous machine. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 length on the turn. Sam is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Allen and Vice the Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that seems impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now twice the Prince has taken second, and Mike Gallant has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. I was excited, but um, the crowd was going crazy and I wanted to relate to the crowd. I, I, I love the, the connection with the crowd. Uh, the horse can't talk, so I can. That's why I did this. In addition to legends, sports is also built on rivalries. The Belmont Stakes solidified one of the best in the history of horse racing. It's hard to say one horse without the other, affirmed in Alidar. Affirmed won the 1978 Kentucky Derby by a length and a half over Ali Dar, and the Preakness by a neck, and grimly held on in the Belmont by just a head in one of horse racing's greatest stretch duels. Fast forward to 2015. They're off in the Belmont Stakes. Not a great start for American Pharaoh, but he will be sent to the lead by Victor Espinosa. Where, for newer generations of horse racing fans, the idea of a Triple Crown winner was as elusive as a mythical Babe Ruth coming to life in the Sandlot. 37 years had passed since a firm's Triple Crown in 1978. An unlucky 13 horses since had won the Triple Crown's first two jewels in the Kentucky Derby and Preakness, 
but not the Belmont. American Pharaoh's jockey, Victor Espinoza, had been in this position before, winning two out of three Triple Crown races with California Chrome in 2014 and War Emblem in 2002. Trainer Bob Baffert had his Triple Crown dreams dashed at the track known as Big Sandy with War Emblem in 2002, Real Quiet in 1998, and Silver Charm in 1997. But American Pharaoh brought to life a Triple Crown winner for a new generation of horse racing fans. There was a sense of community at Arapahoe Park in Colorado and at other racetracks around the country where fans, young and old, cheered, rubbed their eyes to make sure they were seeing things properly, and imprinted a memory that they could recall later when asked, where were you when? American Pharaoh is halfway home in the Belmont. Three quarters went in 113 and two fifth seconds. And he begins his run into the far turn. Three quarters of the length ahead of materiality in second. And then it's Keen Ice on the outside of Mubtahiz, frosted in traffic behind them. And then made from Lucky on the outside around the far turn. And American Pharaoh continues to lead the way. He's on top by three quarters of the length. Moob Tahij is off the rail, and now he's a length behind in second, and American Pharaoh kicks away. American Pharaoh has opened up a two-length lead as they come to the top of the stretch, and Frosted has moved up into second, and they're into the stretch, and American Pharaoh makes his run for glory as they come into the final furlong. Frosted is second with one-eighth of a mile to go. American